Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to do one more Keynesian multiplier practice question in the context of a paper three. If you need an introduction or a review of the Keynesian multiplier, it's the concept behind it. I recommend this video that explains it step by step, and it'll be linked in the video notes below. So let's take a look. So this is part of a series of paper three questions that's within my paper three, paper two calculation playlist. So this is part five. There's four other Keynesian multiplier practice questions that are also linked in the playlist for uh, paper three. So you can practice those as well. So here we have this question, a team, let's uh, be in the habit of kind of underlining key points as we read. A team of macroeconomists recommend country YYZ's central government to spend 32. Uh, $37.2 billion on extending the provision of public health care and education. So we're going to make a note of that. So here we have a change in government spending. All right, so there's a change there in government spending that's going to cause the aggregate demand curve to shift out. Um, and they're going to do that to extend that public health care and education services as an investment in improving their uh, human capital, which in the long run should lead to higher skilled workers uh, and so on. So uh, they estimate that the nominal GDP should increase by 186 billion as a result of that initial injection of government spending of 37.2 uh, billion. So here we have the total change in nominal GDP going up to $186 billion, billion dollars, holding all variables constant. All right, so here's that change in the nominal GDP. Great. So we're gonna tackle in this video questions A and B. There'll be a link to the next video, which will cover question C. So let's look at question A. It says calculate the value of the Keynesian multiplier. So let's underline that. So we're understanding, we're focused on what the question is asking us to do. We have to calculate the value of the Keynesian multiplier used by the team of economists. So this is clearly a Keynesian uh, multiplier question. We know that any change in this case to government spending will multiply out to achieve a greater change in nominal GDP by 186 billion. So I want you to pause the video and think about, calculate what that Keynesian multiplier uh, value will be. Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so let's check your work. So we should be aware, in this case, of how this is working in the, con in the context of the Keynesian multiplier. We're going to have a change in government spending. which will be multiplied by the Keynesian multiplier, whatever that value is going to be. Which is going to achieve a greater change in nominal GDP. All right, so we're just going to plug in uh, information. We have the change in government spending. We have the change in nominal that we can solve for the Keynesian multiplier. So the change in government spending is going to be $37.2 billion multiplied by the Keynesian multiplier, which is going to achieve that greater change in nominal GDP, which we have here as $186 billion. All right, so with that information, we can use some basic algebra. I'm going to divide this by 37.2 billion. And so that they're both equal on both sides, I'll do the same on the other side. 186 billion divided by 37.2 billion. So this cancels. 
what I'm going to be left with is the value of the Keynesian multiplier. So here you can see that the Keynesian multiplier is going to be equal to the value of 186 billion divided by 37.2 billion, and that works out to 5. So the Keynesian multiplier, that is my final answer, is 5. There we go. So I've solved this. Here we have the answer being 5. Perfect. Pretty straightforward. Now let's move on to question B. It says calculate the value. All right, again, let's be in the habit of highlighting what we're being asked to do. Calculate the value of the marginal propensity to consume used by the team of economists. All right, so we have to figure out um, what is the value, oh, oh, no, sorry. <laughs> What's the value of the marginal propensity to consume within the context of the Keynesian multiplier formula? So I want you to pause the video, think about that, make some calculations, and then let's check your work. So go ahead and pause your video now as you work through this question. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can solve question B. So the marginal propensity to consume, there's two formulas for the Keynesian multiplier. <clears throat> Could either be using the formula of one over one minus the MPC, or it could also be equals one over the marginal propensity to save plus the marginal propensity to tax plus the marginal propensity to import. So I'm going to use the top formula because I need to solve for the MPC. So the Keynesian multiplier is equal to one over one minus the MPC, and I need to solve for this. Now I have the Keynesian multiplier. I know that it's equal to five, so I can plug that number in. So let's go ahead and do that. So the Keynesian multiplier is going to be equal to five, which is equal to one over one minus the MPC. And I'm going to try to isolate the MPC. So let's continue to work on that. So what I'm going to do is on the right side of this equation, I multiply it by one minus uh, the MPC. So they cancel. And to make sure it's equal on both sides, I have to do the same on the other side. So here we have five times one minus the MPC. Okay, now let's take a look. So we have five times one minus the MPC, which is equal to one, perfect. And uh, I have five here, so I'm gonna uh, get rid of it on the left side, put it on the right side. In order to do that, I'm gonna divide five by five. And do the same on the other side. So. On this equation, I'll have these two, and they'll cancel each other. But to make sure the equation's equal, I have to do the same to the other side, so there we go. Okay, so we're almost there. Let's uh, continue on this side here, so let's go up. All right, so now what do I have on with this equation? I have one minus the MPC being equal to one divided by five, and that's gonna be equal to 0 0.2. So I have one minus MPC equals 0 0.2. All right, almost there. So now I'm gonna get rid of the one on this side. So I'm gonna have negative one plus one. So let's add that in there. So I'll have 
negative one plus one, so they cancel. We have 0.2 minus one on this side. And right, I'm doing that to cancel these and isolate the negative MPC. All right, so now I have negative MPC, which is equal to 0 0.2 minus one, which equals to negative 0 0.8. And then I'm just going to get rid of the negatives and divide them by one. So here I'll have this divided by negative one. This also divided by negative one. They cancel. All right, these will eventually cancel. So I'm gonna end up finally with my final answer, the MPC equals uh, point uh, zero point eight. Okay, so that is my final answer. So I'm going to highlight that, and I just want to double check my work. So the MPC equals zero point eight. All right, so here we have the answer. Here is zero point eight. And I want to check my work. So let's make a little box just to check my work. They solve correctly. So the Keynesian multiplier equals one over one minus the MPC. The Keynesian multiplier should equal five. So KM equals one over one minus 0 0.8. Keynesian multiplier equals one over 0 0.2. And that will equal Five. So I did calculate this correctly. I have the correct answer there. And that's it for this video. So we've covered uh, questions A and B. There'll be a link to question C, where we will illustrate, sketch an ADAS diagram to show the impact of the multiplier, what this data looks like conceptually within the context of an illustrated um, monetarist model. So that's it. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can comment those questions below. And don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you.